Hello guys, welcome to Houdini Make Simple. In this course, we will be covering all the basic stuff that you need to know if this is your first time working with Houdini. We will be creating a simple asteroid effects and use the process to learn all the fundamental concepts that you need to know to start your Houdini journey. In this first part, we are going to go over the interface of the software and what's important to know and focus on the beginning. Houdini can be very overwhelming at the beginning with so many panels, windows, options, tools. So we're just going to focus on what's important to know at first. So what is Houdini? Houdini is a 3D software used for creating visual effects, animations and simulations. What makes Houdini really different from other 3D programs is that it works with nodes. And each node is an operation. This means that everything is created through a network of interconnected nodes. And this makes Houdini super powerful because you can easily go back and change things without starting over from scratch. So let's start with the interface. Uh, so once you open Houdini, you should see something like this. And as you can see, you have a lot of things going on in here. So the main things I uh, want to focus is on what's important at the beginning. You have three main panels where you're going to spend most of your time within Houdini. One is going to be the network panel here on the down right side. Then we have the parameters on the upper right. And then we have the viewport on the left. So these panels are really connected. So basically the network panel is where you build your objects, geometry and effects. And everything you build within the network, you're going to see a visual representation on the viewport. Lastly, you're going to use the parameters tab to change the settings of the node selected within the network. Let's start creating the first object to see the relation between these panels. Uh, you are going to left click on the network panel and press the tab key. This will expand the tab menu. Uh, we're going to talk more about this later. But for now, let's just type box and hit enter. This is going to create a geometry node with the box inside. And in the viewport, we can see the visual representation of the box. In the parameters, we can see all the settings for this box. So we can start playing with these numbers. For example, we can start changing the uniform scale if we want to make the box bigger. In this case, we can put 1.5. And now it's gonna, we're going to see in the viewport how the, the box gets bigger. Or we can play with slider left and right to make the box smaller or bigger. We can also start playing with the rotation in one of the axes, in this case the x-axis, or in the y if we want to rotate the box. To change these values, you have a few options. You can just select here the box and just type the value you want to rotate the box. Or another thing you can do is you can hold middle mouse click and this is going to expand this, this small menu. And if you go right, in this case, it's going to move and rotate the box in this axis uh, in 0.1 increment. So if you want to make it bigger, you can expand this menu again, holding the middle mouse click. And then you go up. This is going to be one increment of one. If you go up again, it's going to be increments of 10. So you have a few options if you want to change the value. This is the same for scale translation to basically any of these options. You can hold the middle mouse click and go up and down, moving the mouse left and right, holding the middle click. Or again, you can just type the value you want. Another panel that is going to be super important in the future is going to be the timeline. This is on the bottom part of the interface. And we want to talk more about this when we start working on dynamics effects, meaning those effects that are going to be changing over time. So let's focus now on how to navigate within the viewport. Uh, on the left side, we have all the transformation tools and also the tools to navigate within the viewport. And on the right side, we have all the options uh, that are more uh, related with display. So we're going to select the camera by clicking on the icon or holding the Alt click. And then if we hold Alt and left click, we're going to be able to move the camera angle. If we hold the right click, we can dolly in and out, moving the mouse up and down. And holding middle click and moving the mouse, we're going to be able to pan the camera around the viewport. 
So the 3D space in Houdini is based on a coordinate system uh, with X, Y and Z axis. And the center of this world is where all the three axes are equal to zero and these centers works as a reference for positioning objects in the scene. So we have the X axis, that's going to be the horizontal axis. We have the Y axis, that's going to be the vertical axis. And then we have the Z axis, that's going to be the uh, depth axis, as you can see here on the bottom left side. We can move the object that we just created, in this case a box, within the world of Houdini, uh, either using the parameters uh, tab or we can also use the transformation handle on the left side. In this case, if we click on move, we can select the object and just use these arrows to move the box, in this case on the X axis. We can also move it on the Y axis or the C axis. And if you see, as you move the box within the viewport, you're going to see how these values change on the parameters of the box. At the same time, you can bring this back to the center and under the move bottom, we have the rotation. When I rotate, in this case, every time you rotate this, it's going to affect the values on the parameters too. And same with the scale. So we have basically all the transformation we can do on this box. We are translate, rotate, and escape. So using the transformation handles, we can move, rotate, or scale objects in the viewport, and those changes will be reflected on the parameters tab. And remember that if you are using the select tool or any of the transformation handles, you can hold Alt to quickly switch to the camera view, and then you can use the same shortcuts we use with left click, right click, or middle click, just to move the camera around, uh, dolly in, dolly out, or pan around the viewport. And as soon as you let go the Alt key, you're gonna go back to your selected tool or handles. So finally, let's say you move the camera away from the box and you are here and you want to go back to focus on the camera, you can hold spacebar F to get back and recenter the camera on the selected object. Now let's focus on the network panel. Uh, in this case, we have different kind of network, different types. Uh, we have the OBJ network, but we have also other type of network depending which kind of process we are working on. Could be we are working on materials, rendering, lighting, maybe compositing. But in this case, we're just gonna stick to the OBJ uh, because we're gonna be working on objects. Uh, so uh, as you see here on the right side, we have uh, the word object. We are working on the object level. Uh, so when I create a box, same as we did before. And remember when we hit the tab, we want to have access to the tab menu. That's going to give us access to all the nodes available within this uh, context and level. In this case, we are on the object level. And once we hit enter, we want to create this box. Uh, and it's going to be a geometry node. Uh, the actual geometry is inside in the geometry level. So we're just going to go and double click. And now we can see that we have the box in the geometry level, as you can see on the right side. Another option to create this same box is just to create the geometry container within the object level. We type geometry from the tab menu. As you can see, nothing is displaying yet on the viewport. But once we go inside to the geometry level, now we can tab menu and then a uh, type box and now we're going to create a box we can also let's say type a sphere and create a sphere within this geometry container so after we create this box we're going to start doing some transformations but in this case although we have some options on the parameters tab on the box node uh, to scale or move the, the box uh, there, there are better ways to do this so we're going to create a transform node so we're going to hit the tab menu, type transform, and want to create a transform node. In this case, we need to connect the output of the box to the input of the transform node. And lastly, we need to uh, set the display flag at the end of this chain of operation, meaning that we need to click on the right side of the transform node. And now, as you can see, the blue flag is on the transform. Now we can start moving, let's say, the box one meter to the right. In this case, 
want to see the end result on the viewport. And if we go and put the display flag back on the box, we want to see again the box in the center of the universe. And this is super important to understand because uh, we are only going to see the end result of this tree if we put the display flag on the last node. So let's say I, uh, I create another transform node to, I don't know, do some rotation on this box. But I'm going to see this rotation if I set the display flag on the second transform. And now I see the end result of this tree. Uh, I create the box in the center, move the box to the right, and then rotate the box uh, from the center of the universe. So now let's say I want to create a sphere. I can also create a sphere within the same container. But remember, we can only set the display flag in one node within the geometry object. So if we want to see both objects at the same time, both geometries at the same time, we need to create a merge node and set the display flag into the merge. So in this case, we want to create merge. We're going to connect the output of the box to the input of the merge. Same with the sphere. And now we can uh, set the display flag on the merge node. So right now we are not seeing the sphere because it's inside the box. So we're going to have to create a transform node. Hit enter. And one way to connect this is just drag in between the lines and that's going to hook up the node. In this case, I'm going to move the merge so we have more space. I'm going to connect this transform node and now we can move the sphere one uh, meter to the left so we can see both geometries if we set the display flag on the merge. So we have a sphere, then the transform, and finally the merge that is combining the box and the sphere. And if we go one level up, now we can see on the object levels both geometries. Now let's say I want to add another geometry. We can hit tab and create a torus. We can also connect the torus on the merge. You can connect as many as you need. And in this case, we also want to, let's say, transform the torus. First, I'm gonna scale this torus. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. And we're gonna create a, another transform just to move this uh, a bit to the right. Uh, I'm gonna move on the X axis in, let's say over here is okay. Uh, and now we have these three elements and let's say I want to uh, check how this would look without uh, the, the scale transformation. So we can use the bypass. So if we click on the left, we are going to see this yellow flag that's going to be on. And basically, uh, let's first uh, rename this scale and uh, move. And basically the yellow flag is going to be skipping this uh, node and uh, in this case we're going to be uh, bypassing the scale so we can see how the end result is with or without this transformation. In the object level we can create multiple containers so we're going to go and create a geometry node and we're going to rename this to torus and also let's rename this to a sphere something like sphere and box. Uh, once we create these two containers, so far in the torus we got nothing. So we want to go inside and just create the torus geometry. As you can see, we are seeing on the viewport the torus and also the box and the sphere, but they are ghosted. So if we go to some display options here on the upright, we have three options. One is to show all the objects from the, from the object level. The other is to ghost those objects and the other one is not to display those objects. So let's say I want to move this torus on top of the box. Uh, I want to create a transform node, connect this to the torus, set the display flag on the transform, and then we're going to ghost the objects on the object level so we can actually use them as reference. So we want to start moving the torus on the y-axis. You want to move up just a little bit, just to be placed on top of the box. Now we can go back to the object level and now we see all the objects in, in the camera, in the viewport. Uh, we can start, let's say I want to move the sphere a bit to the right. We want to uh, select the transform and we can use the parameters or remember we can also 
use the transform handles uh, on the left side. So I'm going to select the transform handle, move a bit to the left, display on the merge to have it as a reference, reselect the transform node and move back just to be right on the edge of the box. Okay guys, so this was the very very basic of Houdini, a bit of interface, a bit of how to create uh, some objects and on the next video we're going to be creating a rock that we're going to be using for the asteroid project and if you find this helpful please leave a comment like and subscribe that's it guys thank you for watching we'll see you on the next one